Okay, this video is going to cover a few examples about applications for the channel capacity theorem. So the first one I wanted to start out with is um, dial-up. Do you guys remember dial-up? Have you ever experienced dial-up? Uh, dial-up is where you use just your plain old telephone landline. Uh, you connect your computer through something called a modem and uh, are able to connect to the internet that way. Uh, it's not a very good channel. It only has 3,000 hertz of bandwidth and you know, it's a it's a real system So there's maximum amplitude levels that you can have for voltages and there's a certain amount of noise that's gonna come with the system and so for a phone Type line you're looking at a signal to noise ratio of 35 DB Okay, so from that we can calculate what is the maximum rate that you can achieve with dial-up, all right? And so what we know is that the channel capacity theorem is the bandwidth, which we know, and log base two of one plus SNR, okay? I'm just gonna call it SNR. Okay, so we know what the signal-to-noise ratio is because it was given. Uh, the thing it was given in dB, so you have to convert that. All right, so what we know is that SNR in dB is 10 because it's a power ratio. Not, it's not 20. It's not a voltage ratio. So it's 10 log 10 of SNR. Okay, and so we know this is 35, and we can solve for S and R. Okay, so that's going to be 10 to the 35 over 10. All right, so we have that number. We know the bandwidth number is, is 3,000. We can plug this all into these to this channel capacity result, and you get... I think 34.8 kilobits per second of um, is the information rate that it, this phone line can support. All right, so the story on that is in the early days, you know, you only had the phone channel. You didn't have broadband internet, so everybody would have a computer modem that would connect to their phone line with this very band limited situation. And, uh, you know, I remember going from a 1200 baud modem, so you'd get basically 1200 um, bits per second. Can you imagine that? 1200 bits per second through the channel. You had to totally avoid graphics because those just took way too long to, to upload and download. Uh, I remember buying a 2400 uh, K bits per second modem and thinking, wow, I'm communicating twice as fast. And then... There were some technological breakthroughs where suddenly you started seeing a 24 kilobits per second modem. And then eventually a 56K bits per second modem. And so I was aware of this channel capacity result and it was like, you know, suspicious. How could it be 56K if, whoops, let's see. How could we have 56K if the theoretical limit is 34.8 kilobits per second. Well, it turns out there's, um, you know, a reason for that. Um, as everything went digital, so did the phone system, okay? And because, you know, there's some technicalities involved, but basically there were fewer, or at least one fewer steps where you did, did uh, A to D conversion, which improved the signal to noise ratio of certain customers um, loop back to the phone company. So basically, if you were fortunate enough to have one of these improved SNR situations, you could achieve up to 56 kilobits per second with this modem. Uh, the signal to noise ratio actually was large enough where it would, you know, that wasn't even the channel capacity limit. It was slightly above that. But normally you'd get 46 to 48 kilobits per second coming out of these modems. 
Okay, these modems are still around. Some people still are on dial-up, all right? But unless there's significant enhancements to plain old television, uh, plain old telephone service, you're not gonna see anything um, substantially larger than a 56 kilobit per second modem. And of course, there's no commercial interest pushing that either. Okay, so even if you had improved SNR, I doubt we'll ever see a modem that's more than 56K. All right, so that's that example. Let's move on to the next one. For example two, I was looking at investigating what happens as a function of bandwidth. So we're going to let the bandwidth go to infinity. And because eventually you have plenty of bandwidth, as much as you could ever want, an infinite amount of bandwidth, we're going to become power limited. So the signal to noise ratio is going to be the limiting factor. So we're going to fix SNR, all right, and then let the bandwidth go to infinity, and this is called the power limited case. Okay, so do you see why bandwidth is not limited, it goes to infinity. Signal to noise ratio is fixed, all right, so it's limited. You can't, you're not going any higher, all right, so you're looking at the power limited case. So, once you remove bandwidth as a constraint, what happens to your ability to communicate? This is the question we're trying to answer in problem number two, or example number two. Okay, so we know the channel capacity result. It's B, all right, and then log base two of one plus the signal to noise ratio. Okay, but I'm going to write the signal to noise ratio where it's explicitly shown that it's a function of the bandwidth. All right, so we're assuming uh, additive white Gaussian noise is the assumption. We've talked about this a little bit that if you have the power spectral density, you look at the bandwidth of the signal, okay, and over. If the baseband signal over a certain bandwidth is where you're communicating, um, this power spectral density height would be in zero, all right? And so the total noise is going to be the signal power over a to zero times b, where b is b is the bandwidth. <coughs> okay. All right. So we talked about that before. Now, what I want to do is I want to let the limit as B goes to infinity of C. All right, so this would be limit B goes to infinity of this expression. Okay, I'm going to immediately push the B back into the argument of the logarithm. Okay, so log 2 of 1 plus... I'm going to write this as S over N naught, and then put the B in the bottom, raised to the B. Okay, so I write it in that form. Okay, and once I have it in that form, this looks like a limit that you probably had seen from calculus. Okay, so let's consider this limit. X goes to infinity of one plus A over X raised to the X. All right, it's a special kind of limit because as X is getting large, A over X is going to zero, but X is getting really large, so one plus something going to zero raised to the X, it's not clear what's gonna happen with this. Okay, so it's, it's a sort of a famous math problem because it comes up in real life. And you probably worked on this kind of limit uh, where you use L'Hopital's rule to solve for um, the eventual value of the limit. 
Okay, so I'm not going to do the L'Hopital argument here because this one's actually a little bit messy. Involves uh, some derivatives that get you know kind of long. So we'll just quote the result, and you can pursue that if you like. Anyway, the answer is e to the a. All right. So now we look at this, and b plays the role of x. Okay, we're going to push the limit inside the argument of the log. And A plays the role of signal-to-noise ratio. Okay, so what we know is when we apply this limit, limit as B goes to infinity of the channel capacity is the limit as B goes to infinity of log 2. Oh, I, I've done this limit so I can just write down log 2 all right and then I replace this argument with I replace this with this result which is e to the a okay so e to the a would be e to the s over in 0 all right, so this term is representing our signal-to-noise ratio, okay? <clears throat> and if you do properties of logs, you know, this would be, to get log base 2, you take the natural log of E, S over N naught, A to naught, okay? And then you divide by natural log of 2, all right? So log of E raised to the s over n naught, a to naught, is um, just s over a to naught. And then we end up with 1 over log 2, which turns out to be um, 1.44. Right. So it turns out you have a limit. If you fix the power ratio, okay, so this part is fixed, and you let the bandwidth go to infinity, you have a restriction on how well you can communicate. So I, I drew a graph down here. All right, so here's the, a graph of the situation. As you let bandwidth get large, moving this way, the channel capacity goes up but it lays over and reaches a fundamental limit, it will never cross this line, where this line is a function of the signal-to-noise ratio. Okay, S over A to naught. Okay. All right, so, and, and you probably noticed, I, I did a little, you know, if we define SNR as S over N naught beta, it's not really, this quantity is not really signal-to-noise ratio because there's also this dependency on beta whenever you calculate signal-to-noise ratio. But, but you get the idea. If you take beta out of it, you still have this parameter A to naught, okay? And so when you put it all together, this is the fundamental limit on communication. So when I say that this term is signal-to-noise ratio, that's not exactly right because you would need to put in, put back in the bandwidth, but bandwidth is infinite here. And so we're looking at this parameter S over A to naught as giving us the fundamental limit. Okay? So it's power limited in the sense that the noise power, I'm sorry, the signal power is constrained. But if beta goes to infinity, this part down at the bottom also goes to infinity. Okay, so just clearing up that um, mathematical detail. All right. So that does it for example number two. And in example number three, we're going to go through the case where you constrained the um, bandwidth and see what happens. In example number three, we are going to fix the bandwidth, and we're going to let the signal-to-noise ratio 
actually the signal power, that's what we're going to do. We're going to let S go to infinity, the signal power. Okay, this case is relatively straightforward because it's easy to compute. And so what we see is C is equal to B log 2 of 1 plus S over A to naught B. Okay, well, A to naught is a known quantity. It's the signal noise floor for additive white Gaussian noise. All right, and then B is the bandwidth, and that's the thing we're fixing. Okay, so B remains fixed, and the only thing that increases is we are looking at limit as S gets really large of um, of C. And so when that happens, as S gets really large, it's really large compared S over N dot a to naught beta is large compared to 1. So you can say that this would be eventually uh, proportional to B log 2 of S over A to naught B. Okay, so we're looking at when, when you increase the signal to noise ratio or increase the signal power what you can do is you can separate the levels further and further apart and if you have enough power to do that you should be able to communicate faster and faster and faster okay and so if you look at this and you said s goes to infinity all right you would get basically this logarithm shape okay so what we know about logs is yeah they roll over a little bit they don't go up as fast as a straight line or a polynomial, then they lay over, but they don't ever lay over to a flat line. So this is tending towards eventually infinity. So as you increase S, you don't have any limits on um, how fast you can communicate through a channel based on the channel capacity. Of course, there are physical limits on how much power you can send over a channel. Like we talked about with the phone channel, uh, you only have certain voltage levels that this, the system can produce. All right? And once you get to those limits and you have this noise floor, really, you can't keep increasing signal-to-noise ratio. So in a way, um, you don't look so much at this upper end where S gets really, really large. You're just really looking at the cases where, where B is small compared to the signal-to-noise ratio. Okay. That's the interesting case where you have um, uh, a band limit, you know, a bandwidth constraint. Okay, so those are three examples that I want, want you to be aware of um, and put into the context of communication theory. Okay, the last example I wanted to cover in this video is taking a look at something that's called the Shannon limit. And I'd always heard of this number. It's a number that gives a bound on the EB over N naught, okay? That's the way I've said this. A lot of people will say EB over N zero, where N zero is the noise, whoops, noise power spectral density, okay? So that's down on the bottom, and EB is the energy per bit. Okay, EB over N0 is a common parameter that's used for designing various types of uh, digital communication schemes. A lot of modulation schemes, you, you work at with EB over N0 not N zero as a design parameter. Um, to get a certain probability of error, you need a certain value for EB over N0. So if you ever take uh, a different type of communication theory course where they're looking at um, more specific modulation schemes, EB over N0 becomes an important parameter. Okay, so I wanted to talk about this in relationship to something called the Shannon limit. Okay, so before we get started, let's look at our signal-to-noise ratio in our formula here for the channel capacity theorem. We had S over P, where P was the noise power, and for the additive white Gaussian channel, that would be, the noise power would be n naught 
uh, times b, the bandwidth. And s is the signal power. All right, so let's think about that. Let's take s and divide it by r. Okay, s would be in watts because it's signal power, and r would be in bits per second. So the second comes back on the top. So if you think about that, we now have units that are watt times seconds, and watt times seconds is energy. Okay, so when we do S divided by R, we now have um, energy coming into play. But we don't want to change things, so let's multiply by R. R over R is 1, and we still have this left over in not B. Okay, so we can rewrite this. This would be R, the rate, over B. And then we would have EB, which is S over R. Okay. And finally, we carry over the N naught term. Okay. All right. So this gives us an equivalent expression for signal to noise ratio. All right. So now I'm going to start with the channel capacity result. And if you'll remember, the channel capacity result had the B right here, where we're looking at R in bits per second. So if I manipulate this equation and divide both sides by B, I get this inequality. And I know I can make the substitutions. In fact, I just derived it that um, this term here is equivalent to this. So I substitute that in, uh, sorry, on this step, it goes here. All right. And I then can undo the log. All right. If I undo the log, all right, I say two to the R over B is less than, all right, so I have this equation, two to the R over B is less than, and I undid the log argument, one plus R over B, EB over N naught. Okay, so from there, yeah, I just did a couple of steps. I can then have this inequality about EB over N naught, all right? So if I had a given bandwidth and I did different communication rates, this formula I could actually calculate the required EB over N naught. Okay. But when they talk about the Shannon limit, usually this comes up in things like deep space communication applications where you have plenty of bandwidth. We're working in the power limited uh, region. And we really care about how much uh, energy we can get per bit. All right. So if that in fact is the case, you can take a look at what happens when the bandwidth part is allowed to go to infinity. Okay, so bandwidth going to infinity, you end up with um, this limit, which again is just L'Hopital's rule, all right? So you take the derivative of the top, and that's where the log two business comes in. Um, you know, L'Hopital's rule says, take the derivative of the top, which would be 2 to the r over b times the log of 2, the derivative of 1 is 0, divide by the derivative of the bottom. Okay, I'm taking the derivative with respect to uh, r over b. I'm letting r over b go to 0. Okay, and then on the bottom I just get a 1. Okay, and as r over b goes to 0, 2 to the 0 goes to 1, and I get log 2. Okay, and then what people do is then they convert this into dB. Okay, so if I did 10 log 10 of natural log of 2, I get minus 1.6 dB, or roughly that. All right, and so this is known as the Shannon limit, you need at least, 
you know, minus 1.6 dB of energy per bit, uh, eb over n naught, to be uh, at least minus 1.6 dB, or really there's nothing, you know, coding wise that you can do to um, communicate over that channel with any reasonable rate. Okay, so um, those are the four examples I wanted to show you, and uh, hope this. You know, you got to let this sink in. Maybe you won't catch everything about it, but it gives you some ideas of um, the use of the channel capacity theorem.